Hola amigos, hola amigas, Dorian here from Hoovalux. Welcome, bienvenido, croissui, salam alaikum. Welcome to the channel, y'all. Chesh, yakshimash, and howdy, y'all. So today I am doing a unboxing video in the living room. I haven't done it for quite a while. I normally do them in the workshop, but today I decided to do this in the living room because this is going to be an item for the living room once it has been cleaned up and partially restored. So I thought I would give it a go. There's a glass coffee table there with a Hoover portable underneath it because that's where I keep my lovely Hoover portable. And this is going to replace the coffee table that is sitting there. This is a very unusual coffee table. It is a rare coffee table. And I am really, really, really privileged to be the next caretaker of this really unusual machine. So, what I'm going to do is move you guys a little bit closer and we will unbox this together because this is really special for me. So the wind is a howling and the rain is a lashing outside and we are here inside in the warm. Now I'm being very careful with taking this envelope off the top because I think I know what is inside this. So let me undo this envelope. Yes. Here we go. Nothing else inside. Here we have, this is amazing, are the original documents for this product. Looks like ancient parchment. And here we have Instructions for fitting dust bag for this vacuum cleaner. Here we have the guarantee. And here we have the request for service card, which hasn't been filled in. Stamps are 2D, 2P I think. And the BE Service Facilities Limited Depot. So this is the keep the card in a safe place this here. If service is required, mail the bottom portion of card to the nearest service depot listed on the reverse of this card. Check your wall and appliance plug. Ensure hose is not blocked. Blow through from exhaust end of the cleaner. If filter fitted, check to see if choked. A minimum labour charge of 17 and sixpence plus cost of material according to work necessary, will be made if attention is required because of damage under wear or circumstances beyond our liability. BE Service Facilities Limited and they have depots in London Home Counties, Bristol, Birmingham, Doncaster, Manchester, Sunderland and Scotland. So if you're in Wales, you're pretty stuffed. So these are these documents. This is the instructions for fitting a dust bag. So you remove the dust bag panel, grasp dust bag with thumb and forefinger, push hard onto intake nozzle with transparent window uppermost. There's the instructions. And on the back here, this is the Bylock Table Vac. Registered design number 9002363-4. Temporary instruction sheet, as well as will be apparent from its name, the Bylock Table Vac is a combination table and vacuum cleaner. Designed primarily for one floor dwellings, flats, apartments, bungalows, maisonettes, etc., where storage space is limited. The cleaner and accessories are all housed within the cabinet, and the problem of where to store your cleaner is immediately overcome. As a table, the unit presents an attractive piece of furniture, coffee table, bedside table, occasional table for use in the lounge, bedroom or dining room. The tabletop is finished in heat resistant polyester and silent running casters enable the table vac to be moved around as required. A furniture guard protects against damage to the table or other furniture. Operating instructions. Remove the hose from inside the cabinet and screw onto the suction inlet. 
attach extension wands and cleaning tool required. Plug mains lead into a convenient socket and switch on motor. Close the lid of the cabinet and you are now ready to carry out normal cleaning operations. Access to the dust bag is beneath the detachable panel in the inner platform. Hygienic disposable paper dust bags are used and each is fitted with a transparent window so that you can see when the bag is full and requires replacing. When full, just throw away and fit a new bag with window uppermost. See diagram attached. By Lock Electric Limited, Enfield, Middlesex, the 12th of March, 1961. So this vacuum is from 1961. And as you read, is designed for small apartments, maisonettes and dwellings. Right. Did it provide... Did it become popular? No. Why? Because if you did use it as a coffee table, you'd have to clear everything off the coffee table before you used it. Now, you know I love the unusual and the strange and the weird. And this, for me, is the most strangest and weirdest thing, even more weird and stranger than the Hoover Portable, which was a suitcase. Even stranger and more weird than my National Footstool Vacuum Cleaner, which sits over there. Wow. Okay. Let's carefully remove the bubble wrap to reveal... Oh, it smells old. This amazing... Bylock table vacuum. <clears throat> and there we go. That is the top of it. Let me ow not cut my fingers off. I'm just going to remove. bubble wrap. Shoot. Off it. as Louise. Okay. It is now sitting in a cardboard box. So I shall remove it. I'll try to remove it from its box. Last. Let's remove all the rubbish. And here, with its squeaky casters, we have now this is damaged. And I believe this is damaged in transport, but the wood on it wouldn't be very strong anyway. As I can see, it is split here and is also split on that side as well. I'm going to have to get a smaller vacuum cleaner because it's dusty on the inside I'll move the camera a bit closer and we'll take a look okay so I got you closer I've got my Miele ladybug vacuum cleaner here to help me with the cleanup 
with a soft dusting brush attached. Make sure that's on low. Okay, so that's on low. Now, like we just saw, unfortunately, the wood on this side has given way. But again, it is a very, very old machine. There we go, I'm just gonna, actually I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to put something behind it to just support the back a bit. So let me just pull my chair up behind it. And I'll use the arm, there we go, to hold that up. So there we go, you can now see inside. The tools are here on the lid of the, underneath of the lid of the vacuum. Here we have the power cable and we have the hose, which is in very good condition, a bit dusty, but it's in very good condition with its swivel action. Move my chair up. There we go. So you can see inside more. What an unusual, <laughs> lovely, unusual little machine we have here there we go so now you can see inside it this is the little panel that's the on and off switch uh, there is supposed to be a handle on there but that's come off but I have a spare one I can use Inside the machine, here we have a dust bag attached to it. And that's the uh, address. And these dust bags, if I take it off, this one's this one's knackered. This is the Bylock bag, and to tell you what it reminds me of, a when you go into Lidl's and you go to the bakery in Lidl's, that's what it is basically like. It is just a bag that you put your croissants in, or the cheese twists. Transparent here so that you can see the bag. It looks like it's been taped at some point and emptied, but nah. This bag, even though it is very lovely and original, is definitely had it. Unfortunately, I'm going to pop that to one side. Now, because of this, the inside of it is rather dusty, so let's get my meal out and dust it out. Dust out the inside.
Okay, that's much better now that I've dusted it out. Let me take you off the tripod and show you around. So there we go. The Bylock Table Vac. I'll have to have a look and see what tools are missing because there doesn't seem to be a crevice tool for it. And I'm not really sure what should be there either. Um, there is uh, a YouTuber who has one of these in mint condition on his channel, so I will take a look at that and see what should be there, but there are definitely two tools missing. So here we have the inside of it. I found this when I was vacuuming, this belt. I don't know if it's a belt or if it's a seal, I don't know. This is the on and off switch. Unfortunately, the toggle on it is broken, but the switch still works. This side we have the exhaust port with a mesh cover on it. And then inside there, hang on, let me put the lights on. There we go. Inside there we have the intake valve. So this all needs cleaning up. There is a spongy seal on it here. I have a replacement of that that I will put on there as well. Now if I turn you around and have a look and see what's there, you can see... Ah, okay, so that is the rubber ring for the cover of the filter. Okay, and as you can see... That needs cleaning, okay. Let's take you off. Okay, so the cover for the filter is basically a piece of fabric that's very dusty. And then inside there you can see where the motor is. So let me give this a good clean out. Okay, so I've given that a good clean. And I'm just going to pop this back over it like so. This then is the plastic cover that fits over here and holds on with these two hooks. So you can see inside and technically see directly where the dirt is coming in to see where it's full. So first thing I'm going to do is get a bag for it. And I happen to have a spare um, knob of a drawer. So I'm going to put that on there and get a bag. I'm going to get a HEPA flow bag, a pneumatic bag for it. And uh, I'm sure that will do a really good job because it looks very, very similar to a pneumatic one. So I'll try that. So. Let me get this clean, get the doorknob on, and get a bag, come back, and we'll switch it on. Okay, so I'm back. Got a new knob for that, that I found in the garage. So that means I can put it on and take it off easy. And we have a pneumatic, genuine pneumatic HEPA flow bag here that I'm gonna use in it. So I'm first of all, I'm gonna see if it fits. Now, I have noticed that you can, I've seen in shops, Miele bags with the transparent part at the top. I have absolutely no idea where you can get them because that would be ideal. I'm sure it would fit on here. Okay, so this pneumatic bag. I'm trying to work out. fits on perfect it's a bit of a squidge because I'm at an awkward angle doing this but it fits over perfectly so there we go we have the pneumatic HEPA flow bag in there let's put the plastic top on seal it down and uh, plug it in a spare plug over this way so there's a groove here for the plug to come out of so you can shut the lid ok 
Okay, let me just plug it in. I don't know if it's on or off. We shall soon see. God, the motor on that is as dry as buggery. But as you probably saw then, the bag inflated. Ah, oh, it smells vintage. Unless you've actually been close to an old machine and switched it on, that smell, it just takes me back to my grandmother's pantry. In the house where they used to live, there was a pantry under the stairs and that's where she'd kept her, my earliest memory is a Hoover Constellation. And that is what the pantry smelled of. It wasn't bad, it was just, it just smelled older because she had, I remember the Hoover Constellation. I also remember another machine that they used to have. It looked like an old fashioned nil fisk um, that she used to use. But anyway, there was two, there was at least two vacuum cleaners that weren't used. One of them being the Constellation that wasn't used, it was broke or something was wrong with it and they just left it in there and I remember that smell and that is what it smells of it's very distinct you must think I'm mad but you know what I'm on about uh, let's try it again <laughs> Yeah, the bearings on that do sound very, very dry, so that shouldn't be a problem to make it sound a lot better. Um, not bad suction on it. Let's drop the lid. Oh, this is such a shame with the lid. Never mind. So I'll drop the lid. Let's see. Oh. Is so cool right let me put the chair out the way so now that we've had a look at the inside of it let me move that monkey bag out the way so it's got its casters on it there's the intake there's the bag original casters they do look like they could do with some oiling and a little bit of polishing maybe I don't think I'd be able to get them out, but we'll definitely be able to make them sound sweeter. So there we have the intake port. Let's put the hose on. Just trying to see. screws in I believe oh there we go there we go screwed in let's switch it on
That is so cool. It's a shame actually that the switch wasn't on the outside. <clears throat> so you wouldn't have to lift it up to switch it on and off. It would have been possibly a bit better to have a switch on the outside. Um, but I guess then it would kind of like take it away its its look with the switch. But you'd see the holes on anyway, so people were bound to ask, what the hell is that? Right, okay. Let's take out the wand. Ah, the floor tool is missing. That's what's missing. That. And I'll just use this one for now. Tools are in pretty good condition. They just need a clean and a polish. So let's do that. And that. And that. <laughs> I think we should do a mess test, don't you? Right, let me get some mess on the rug and let's give it a go. Okay, so what I've done is made a big mess here after a party of dry rice and glitter. And I'm going to vacuum it up. And I've put on the end an Electrolux tool. Didn't quite fit, so I put a bit of cardboard in to hold it in place. So, let me switch it on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that filter over the motor because I have a feeling that is going to cause a lot of restricted airflow. So I'm going to remove this and try it again. Definitely made a lot of difference.
Okay, so there we go. It's picked up the majority of stuff. Um, I can still see particles bouncing around, but after all, this is a, a very, very thick shag pile carpet rug. So, uh, yeah, and the floor head isn't very good on it. But it did pick everything up, and it does look nice and neat and tidy, and I guess if I was in a bed sit and uh, that was my vacuum cleaner, I guess it would be better than not doing anything at all. Right, so let's pack it up and finish off the video. So there we go, there is my 1961 Bylock table vac. Needing some repairs due to it. But at least it works and it really just needs a bit of cleaning up and a little bit of work due to it and then we will get it back and then it'll be in the living room as a coffee table. Now the top of it is some sort of like coated plasticky melamine kind of thing. I'm not looking to restore it because it, that's going to be pretty much impossible. But what I will do is polish it and um, hopefully the scratches and the marks should come out of it and it should bring it up looking very good. Uh, the wood on the sides of it and the rest of it does need some work to do into it. So what I will do is I will um, rub it down and then re-varnish it. So it'll be nice and shiny on the outside and the top will, you know, to have it with sort of like having look, looking like it's being used. I like that, the, as they call it, the patina. I like the patina on Max patina. Um, but yeah, the, side, the wood on the side, that'll be pretty easy just to rub down and re-varnish. Uh, the top, on the other hand, I'm just going to polish up. The back issue here, this piece of wood, it has been repaired at some point because there are three screws in it. But the wood, and it's been glued, but it just hasn't held. I mean, this is quite a heavy piece of... Um, you know lid on it with the tools and it just looks like that um it, it just couldn't hold the weight look maybe it's been pushed back and snapped and whatever this side as well is also looking a little bit worse for weather so worse for wear so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a look online um, and have a look for some wood repair videos and see what i can do to repair this but it's not a major thing it will it will be fine with what i do to it so I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you very much. This is a very special video for me because uh, I'd never even seen one of these before. And I saw it on eBay and Pip bought it and uh, it, it, it arrived. And uh, yeah, it's a very, very rare looking machine. And I hope to get it up to, you know, looking as best as I can get it. The HEPA flow bag on it now works really well. So that's going to protect it using rather than that paper bag that was all rotted away although it was nice to find the original bag with it but um there's nothing i could do with it to save it it's it's disgusting it's filthy um but what i will try and do is and see if i can find some of those or if any of you guys can let me know where i can get those with the mila bags with the transparent top on it that would work really well on it as well fingers crossed i'll see if i can get one of them so thank you very much for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe for more videos. The restoration on this now, a lot of the videos at this time of year are more kind of, um, how can I explain, are a bit more, um, I don't know, basic, because the weather isn't very good, and of course, temperature in the garage is not warm enough for me to be in there for hours, and especially doing stuff like painting and spraying and everything, so... I have to wait for the warmer weather to be able to do that kind of thing. So thank you very much for watching. Please comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye y'all.